we're trying to preserve culture mm -hmm. and uh, and curate and amplify heritage. So to do that, uh, we're not just a museum mm -hmm. with artifacts. We want this to live. We want it to evolve. Hello and welcome to The Mayman Show. On the occasion of Arab News' special coverage for the fifth anniversary for the Daraia Gate Development Authority, today we have the Chief Marketing Officer for DGDA, Mr. Kiran Haslam. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Sam. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and uh, before we start everything, I mean, how does it feel to be part of the fifth anniversary for one of the most intriguing projects in Saudi? Amazing. And um, and I think that it's a, it's such an interesting milestone. It's a milestone that we, we want to shout about to each other in 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 the office um, more so than outside the office um, you know dgda has such a unique workplace uh, we were recently recognized as one of the best places to work in the kingdom which is incredible but sort of not a surprise because yeah. of the the way in which we cooperate with each other and interact with each other which is really refreshing and really dynamic and there's a lot of energy Sometimes there's uh, uh, there's a lot of excitement, you know, and uh, and it can all concertina up and uh, and then relax a bit. Um, but what's really great, I not wanting to name brands, I, I will say that I have visited the Google offices, right. and they they are they have a reputation for having a very open, exciting, and dynamic workplace mm -hmm. where uh, people enjoy themselves uh, and th that crossover point of where it's work and where it's just how we want to live. It's it's blurred. All right. And I think that DGA is just like Google in that regard, uh, with a lot less beanbags around the office. Because <laughs> Google, of course, as you know, is famous yeah. for having beanbags everywhere. So our spines are all straight because we're sitting on good chairs, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and we're still able to interact in that kind of uh, positive manner. So to be at five uh, five years, I mean, I'm I haven't been there for five years, but I feel like uh, I have sometimes. Uh, because of the openness and the transparency that the organization has. All right. And aside from having a good spine and a unique uh, working environment, what makes you know the the Daria project unique in its own right as a whole? The project. The project is, um, I think, something so magnificent because it's almost all of the little assets that we're creating for what is ostensibly a city in, in Riyadh, you know, Drea, uh, we're, 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 we're creating mixed use assets. And, um, and historically, people have talked about it almost from a development perspective only, which is, you know, the five star hotels and, uh, and the academies and university concepts and, uh, and all of the, the stuff which creates a, um, a way to live inside a city within the capital city, which is uh, Riyadh city. Mm -hmm. um, it's sort of the humanity which is linking all of the projects, all of those assets, all of those locales and uh, and initiatives, and the entire project in itself is human scale. So it's all in reference to Najdi architecture. Mm -hmm. It's all Adobe construct, and um, you know we've we've created 180 million mud bricks thus far to create the uh, the first phase of uh, of Derea. Mm -hmm. to replicate the feel. To authentic. replicate the feel of yeah. Atureif, absolutely, and it's all it's all you know underpinned by what Atureif is. You know this mm -hmm. incredible citadel from seventeen hundred, which uh, which was just a, a a place to be inspired. You know, uh, and so those the one hundred eighty mud bricks that we're doing to sort of replicate and amplify the the spirit and the meaning of Atureif and the significance of Atureif going out to to form Derea, the city that we're building. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to give you a, a little idea, one hundred eighty million mud bricks. If you stack them end to end, it's three point seven times longer than the Great Wall of China. So wow. it's a it's a it's a big project. It's a mm -hmm. complex project, but it's one which is always rooted in sort of humanity and culture and uh, and interaction. Okay. And uh, and so that's I think that's what really sets the Dreya project apart. Um, you know, a lot of these assets are almost they 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 are all important equally so. But in many respects, to the to the human proposition, to the interaction proposition, to the culture proposition, uh, they are almost sort of byproducts. They're just sort of, of course, they need to be there in order to fulfill this quality of life, okay. this pedestrian living. And mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, that's it. I think that's what sets us apart. Okay, so um, you know, let's let's dive in a bit more to the pedestrian aspect. Like, how is this project going to be more of a pedestrian meaningful project so you know a, a couple of decades ago there was a movement um from uh, from pretty 
uh, respected chefs all across the world and, and, and more so in, uh, in Europe, um, where they had this whole slow food idea, right? Mm-hmm. You know, in, in the antithesis to fast food. The idea that you can slow down, you can have quality food, you can cook together, you can eat together, you can share plates. You know, the idea was not so much on the food, it was more more about the connectivity, the, the human element around food, right? And the enjoyment of food, which is fundamentally what we do. It's why we love okay. to go to restaurants, right? Yeah, I love food. So. So, <laughs> and the sharing of it, you know, when you taste something, you go, oh my gosh, that is incredible. You want you know your sister your mother your wife your you know your friend try it try yeah. that you know it's inc- okay. oh my gosh it's incredible and that concept was sort of lost because we were sort of the industrialization of how we enjoyed food so you know in in much the same way if you take that slow food concept we're sort of taking it from a from a cultural perspective right mm-hmm. the preservation of saudi culture the preservation of saudi history and the values underpinning that the lessons that we want to take and amplify forward to the future you know there's an opportunity if you just slow down a little bit and savor it just enjoy it understand it mm-hmm. let it breathe so that you can feel it and contextualize it okay. and use it and so the the idea of being pedestrian you do that you know it's hard to have a very engaging experience i often use the example of uh, of a great city like barcelona where you'll walk around and you'll be pedestrian cobblestone alleyway you'll turn and there's this incredible artist doing an incredible performance and it's incredibly moving it's very very hard to pull up to the curb in your car jump out go and have that moving experience jump back into your car and drive off again yes. right so to, to get these meaningful engaging experiences you also have to pedestrianize and you have to slow down and you have to be eye to eye or ear to ear or shoulder to shoulder and you have to have these moving exchanges all right and the promise of the Dorea project is we have gone subterranean in our infrastructure okay so that we can take some of the road links some of the more um, obvious uh, elements of city life which may not be as savory you know no one ever wants to have to constantly think you're holding your little six-year-old's hand and you want to make sure that, you know, he or she is not going in the way of a passing car or yeah. a, or a truck or whatever it might be. And so we're taking all of those elements of city life, going subterranean, mm-hmm. and then we have a walkable pedestrian city. Mm-hmm. And and this rings out from the origins of Atureif as well. You know, if you walk through uh, Atureif and you experience Salwa Palace and go behind it and around the little citadel, you know, you've got that feeling you know, everything's a little bit closer in proximity. Everything's a little bit slower. So the Dreyer idea is, you know, or someone you need to go to your office right. and you need 30 minutes to get to your office. Well, you might leave 45 minutes ahead of schedule because yes. uh, you'll, you'll probably encounter someone along the way mm-hmm. walking alongside you or walking in the opposite direction. And you may stop and have a conversation. You may stop and have a coffee, you know, and it's that kind of exchange where it's a unique proposition because it not only preserves culture, it amplifies uh, that interaction between people and mm-hmm. therefore amplifies cultural exchange as well. Okay. And um, basically, uh, h- how do you feel th- this human element will uh, add to the uniqueness of the project? Well, <clears throat> so, I mean, you you can always make Disneyland. Right? Okay. Uh, you can always create an attraction and, and there's a place for that. There's a place for that, for sure. You want to go there and it's an Instagrammable moment. You want to take a picture and you want to remember it and you want to talk about it and share it. Um, I think when you have a really meaningful exchange, it has such huge ramifications on who you are. You think about that. You think about that person. So maybe you you went to the office a bit early. You stumbled across such and such and you had a conversation. Such and such says something. Okay. And you're in your office doing your everyday thing, but you're thinking about that or or it resonates in a different way in the context of what you've what you've got to do that day and and i think that that that's the personality behind things and personality really goes a long way and that it's that personal moment it's that human interaction it's it's the origin story for you know uh, legends being passed down from grandmother to grandson you know okay. um it's it's that oratory um you know transition as well and and that's where the the human element is so really important all right and uh you know Duria will be open to tour for tourists pretty soon um uh i believe what what year is it scheduled in your so we'll be opening up to to the public in september okay uh to be to be honest we're sort of in the in the soft opening so there are a lot of people who are coming through at the moment and getting to experience it um but up is so important to us it is the 
it is sort of like the linchpin at the heart of the Dorea project. It's why we exist. Mm -hmm. You know, going back to when the Banu Hanifa tribe settled in Wadi Hanifa, what that meant, the agricultural society, the citadel of Aturaif that then transpired. Going back to uh, to that time, you know, in, we're, we're talking about 1700, 1727. Okay. Um, and you've got a, a situation where to the left-hand side of Salwa Palace was the first treasury in the Arabian Peninsula. Okay. To the right-hand side was the second largest mosque in the Arabian Peninsula. And behind Salwa Palace was a, uh, a school mm -hmm. uh, for both male and female um, students. And that was, you know, a school of mathematics and astronomy. And, uh, and again, that's, you know, going back to 1700. And, and that means something to us. That means something. And I think in the, when you contextualize it in modern day, today's, you know, Saudi Arabia, um, I think there's a lot of pride. There's yeah. a lot of anchoring um, values and culture. You know, if you, if you have a look at the, the great imams uh, from the history of Aturaif and some of the really symbolic moments that were made and gestures that were, were conducted. And, you know, you talk about unity and justice and peace. And, you know, there, there are all of these really important elements that I think come forward in, uh, in, in time. And so we'll open up to Reif. Uh, you'll be able to come through. You'll be able to explore. Yeah. And it's really exciting because we're trying to preserve culture mm -hmm. and, uh, and curate and amplify heritage. So to do that, uh, we're not just a museum mm -hmm. with artifacts. We want this to live. We want it to evolve. So we've got a really incredible way to bring mm -hmm. that history, which has been so predominantly oratory in, in the kingdom, uh, to bring it back to life, to impart yeah. it. So you'll meet people, you'll encounter people, you'll see things and you'll feel things through Atarif, which I think are very uh, important to, uh, to see. Okay. And, uh, you know, getting back to, you know, you said pride. Pride is, is, is a huge factor of this project and, you know, how Taref is, is the heart of, of Dereya and Dereya is actually the heart of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. It's the founding home of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Um, in your in your in your opinion, I mean, there's lots of tourism development projects with rich history and culture, but what makes developing the founding home of the Kingdom so unique? The stories are remarkable. Yeah. The history is remarkable. You scratch your head, and even if you've looked into some of the stories and some of the history, even if you've visited Ab um, you know, what you're really looking at when you realize it, when you see it, when you feel it, I mean, there's a warmth to the place, there's a mm -hmm. generosity to it, just aesthetically, there's a generosity to it. Um, I think it's 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 obvious, it's an ecological city as well, being of mud brick construction. And um and there's an important element of sustainability, which just sort of rings true there, right? Yeah. When you look at these ecological uh, cities of the future, and uh, you know there are places that are using mud brick construction in um, in Switzerland now, looking at a forward thinking view of uh, of construction, thermal efficiency, and architecture. Um, that was there 300 years ago, yeah. right? And and there's a warmth to it. So you almost almost everyone does this. They want to touch the wall mm -hmm. you know when they walk past Salwa palace or walk down one of the walkways you you just want to you want it's tactile yeah i mean uh, i personally want to do the same thing when i see it just yeah. just to get the just feel to touch it. just to so understand what, what, it was what does like, that right? feel like you yeah. know and and i think that's that's true also for the for the stories for the history you because of that tactility you feel like you want to get more of that out mm -hmm. and so you do and it's surprising i was so surprised to understand so much about the history and we've got incredible historians and I'm very fortunate that sometimes I can ask a question uh, to uh, to his uh, his Excellency uh, Dr. Al Samari and get an answer. You know, who who greater to give yeah. me an answer on the history of Atarayf? You know, so I, I can tap into some of this information, and I'm just blown away. And I I think when when people start traveling into Atarayf from further afield, certainly in the kingdom, when people go uh, to visit us. Um, I think they're going to see something so unique and so special, and mm -hmm. it's very moving, and it's very warm, and it's very magical, mm -hmm. and um, and yeah, I think that's uh, that's something which is really incredible. Okay, so um, you know, aside from uh, I guess you know being in the soft launch phase and opening up in in September, what can we expect from you know Daria Gate Development Authority in the future? So immediately following Atoreif opening, mm -hmm. uh, we will open Matal Al Bujeri. All right. So uh, Matal Bujeri is a really wonderfully designed um, for a, 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 a really enjoyable time out, whether that's a daytime or an evening. 
um, or an early evening thing. It's, it's a place where families can gather, uh, friends can gather. We've got an incredible selection of um, famous chefs and, uh, and Michelin restaurants. We've got uh, more um, accessible, uh, everyday, just drop-in, casual dining kind of outlets and, uh, and coffee shops. Uh, we've got a lot of entertainment on offer as well. Mm -hmm. And you're overlooking a Toref beautifully lit in the evening. Uh, and you've got access down into Wadi Hanifa as well. So there's a lot that people can see and that's going to be as well this year. So mm -hmm. after we open Atoreif and you've started to go through Atoreif, you'll be able to pop across the, the bridge near the Ministry of Culture and then go and explore Matal al yeah. uh, meet with friends, have a great meal. Uh, we've got some outstanding restaurants that are there. Mm -hmm. Whether they're famous or small, they've been handpicked and selected because of what they offer and mm -hmm. their outlook on what they want to do with unique dishes that you'll only find here in Dereya, you know, and okay. unique ingredients. And so, um, so that's, that's next. And then there's, there's just so much more. We've got a, we've got a plan to, uh, to really bring some of the mixed elements and assets to life, you know, in terms of engaging with great media outlets such as yourselves and in terms of engaging with great, you know, academics and academies and, um, and programs and universities and, there's just a lot that's happening. There's a whole residential and commercial okay. um, offering as well. So we'll have incredible, you know, high quality office space, uh, incredible homes, you know, where you might choose to uh, to live uh, I'd yourself. Be more than happy to. You know? yeah. So, and again, pedestrian, right? So mm -hmm. it may not be for everyone, um, but it's for someone who recognizes that uh, that quality and uh, and wants that particular quality of life. No. There are people who want a, a unique quality of life and some who want a different kind of a unique quality of life. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we've sort of seen and uh, and sort of tested out and, and, and tested the waters, so to speak, on uh, on what the proposition of Dreya is. And okay. we're super excited. Okay. And when you say soon, what is when, when can we expect soon to be like uh, towards like let's say december or so level. for matal abu jerry mm -hmm. I, I i think that we're going to see uh, we're going to see a lot of visitors having a really really good time uh, between september and november as we start to open up and invite all of the um, all of the uh, visitors through um, so by the end of this year i think there'll be a real feeling of what the promise of today is mm -hmm. um, and a lot of excitement that uh, that we're open all right. um, and at that moment in time, uh, we'll be uh, offering opportunities to come to our visitor centers and our welcome centers and understand the, the full range of the entire Dereo project. Right. And we're still on course to deliver that project um, as per, uh, as per uh, the original plans. And so you'll start to see year after year, you'll see groundbreakings and assets opening. Um, you'll see opportunities to on a Thursday evening, call your friends or go with your family and mm -hmm. say, let's head down to Dereya and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, have a look and uh, have a walk around and have a great meal and uh, yeah, have mm -hmm. a moving experience. Sounds interesting. Who knows? Maybe we can replace the studio and, and record in Dereya as well. So yeah. Why don't we? Why not? I, I tell you, let's, let's do that. When we open today, maybe we should do a special <laughs> broadcast from today. Oh, I'll be more than happy and, to come. And, I'll, I'll take you up on that there. invitation, by the done. way. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, you know, I, I've done, you know, some research before, you know, we met and everything about you. And you, you have a very interesting uh, background. And you've worked with lots of luxury brands, you know, from automotive to yachting and everything. So... You know, what makes Dere as a project uh, similar or different to your past experiences? Well, okay, here's a strange thing, right? We've, we've talked about slowing down in a pedestrian city. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked about the time it takes to engage culturally. Uh, one of the things that I realized on my journey working in, uh, in, in luxury companies mm -hmm. um, is luxury is not, um, it's not the detail work. Yeah. It's not the, uh, you know, gold and diamonds and, uh, and treatment. It's not the zero to 100 kilometers an hour and 2.9 seconds. It's, it's not that. It's time. Okay. You can appreciate all of those things because obviously when you're talking about high luxury and the detail it takes to create a fabulous watch or a, an amazing, you know, handmade uh, item, of course it takes time to do mm. that detail work. Yeah. But if I spoke to anyone who was enjoying our products or services, they all said to me, do you know what, Kieran, the, the, big, the big trouble I have, the, the number one luxury in the world is actually just time. Time to switch off and enjoy something. Time yes. to get away from work, to get away from you know, the business element uh, and, to, and to connect. 
And those times are are few and far between for a lot of the most powerful people in the world. So they really appreciate it. And that Mm -hmm. has sort of dictated the shape of luxury. Yeah. Ironically, we're talking about delivering that same luxury of time to everyone. Okay. From all walks of life, from all ages, when you talk about the Drea project. So there's some interesting kind of a similarities between the two propositions in a strange kind of obtuse way okay um, but i've i've enjoyed the transition and the change from that world to this world probably because um of one thing i i think if i'm really honest uh i probably love cars and classic cars yeah, and makes two uh, of us cars in general yeah. i probably love them too much to work in the car industry for real yeah oh, okay. i think so wow. uh, but what I've come to realize is uh, that's because I think I'm 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 I've, I've found something here with uh, with my time in the, in the Dorea project and what we're doing. Well, mm-hmm. I don't think you can love it that much that you that you can't be in the okay. in the industry. So right. because it's all about people and it's all about humanity and it's mm-hmm. all about these connections. So. Okay, and since you love cars, uh, if if the, the Dorea project was a classic car, what would it be to you? <sighs> <laughs> oh, that's really a, yeah. that's a great, that's a, actually a great question. Mm-hmm. That's a great question. Someone at Bentley who, uh, who, uh, who knows me would get really upset with me if I didn't say Bentley, yeah. uh, but I'm going to, I'm going to make them upset. I'm sure. Um, I, uh, I think it would have to be a large car okay. because, um, it's one where it's all about, you know, um, being together. Mm-hmm. You see, the interesting thing about cars is I love cars, but um, but perhaps my wife doesn't love them equally. So okay. she loves boats. And the reason is that when you get on a boat, you can be with family. Okay. And it's all about that. Right. Uh, in a car, it's really just a pleasure for the person who's behind the wheel with their foot on the pedal. Yeah, Everyone exactly. else is nervous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyone else who's in the car is nervous. So uh, so I think it would have to be a really, really big uh, a big car where, where it's not about going fast. It's about enjoying it. So mm-hmm. perhaps it is a Bentley in that regard not from a price tag perspective um, of course it could be from a price tag perspective mm-hmm. sometimes um, but um, it's more about just getting in and, and being relaxed and, and and enjoying the ride sounds interesting i mean with me it would be a 1956 chevrolet corvette okay i love those cars yeah i mean they, to me it's like a masterpiece yes it is <laughs> it is definitely no, right. i agree with you special car special place special moment in time and in history exactly yeah. exactly and uh, you, you know if you're an anthropologist you've you, you've done a lot of unique things in in life aside from from marketing you know let's, yeah. uh, let's let's tap into that a bit um so you, you know you, you've you've authored two children's books yeah uh, just by sheer um encountering it really i mean really? It, it was it, yeah it was it i mean really, how, how did that happen like do you, do you want to know the real story how, yeah of how, course the real story of how this happened was mm-hmm. i wanted to do a campaign which spoke to people for a extremely high-end niche luxury product mm-hmm. and i wanted to engage on a very human level all right whenever you see photographs of luxury items and you see like a family dinner or something like that it's all curated there's a full glass of orange juice where the six-year-old boy is seated there's no crumbs or spaghetti sauce on the tablecloth. It's all contrived. All right. And I wanted to break that. And I wanted to be real. And I wanted to make things as, as if you've just walked into a great Italian family dinner. And there's stains on the tablecloth. And, mm. you know, little uh, Giacomo has dropped his, his you know, his, the meatballs the meat on ball. the floor. And yeah. the dog's eating it at that moment in time. And, mm. you know, that's, that's, that's real. That's right? real, yeah. You feel it. Yeah. You don't feel like you're presenting somebody to some something to someone that you want them. You mm-hmm. feel like you're drawing them into the picture. Okay. So it was the same kind of an idea. And I wanted to have a, 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 a really great campaign where it was a father reading a bedtime story to, uh, to uh, his children on a luxury yacht. Okay. An extremely high price tag luxury yacht. Okay. And, uh, and I wanted to make it very real. And interestingly, mm-hmm. I'm a huge fan of Dr. Zois. Right. A lot of people mispronounce it as Dr. Zeus, but it's actually Dr. Zeus. Right. And uh, I'm a huge fan of Dr. Zeus because of the lyricism and the rhythm yes. that, uh, that, that he used. And, um, and, uh, and it was poetry. You know, it was poetry for kids and it was accessible and memorable. And mm-hmm. uh, so I, I wanted to take this, uh, this Dr. Zeus uh, book and have the father reading to the children. Okay, and then I found out uh, how crippling uh, financially it would have been to obtain just a flat image of the Doctor Zoys book. Okay, uh, and I thought, well, I don't want to spend that money on a on an incidental book. That book means something to me, but how about I just make a, a mock up book mm-hmm. uh, so that uh, so that we can utilize that for the ad campaign? That's actually how it started. From the okay. mock up book, I just had an idea, 
and I was on a flight. I was flying to Miami, and um, and I put a set of headphones on and uh, and listened to some uh, to, to to some Brazilian music, okay. and I thought about the underwater world, and uh, and I started writing, and uh, and it just went from there. And I literally wrote the first book in probably about forty minutes, okay. and um, and then just sort of worked on it and tweaked it a little bit. And I thought about the direction of travel, and I thought about the values of what I was trying to say to children, mm -hmm. and the values of um, of the environment. I'm I'm hugely aware that we have a lot of work to do as okay. society, global society, to look after the planet. I think everybody's starting to catch on now as well. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of where it originated. Okay. And then the second book came out as sort of a, uh, a second uh, uh, you know, interpretation of, that, uh, of those lessons and to focus a little bit more on things like plastic and... Uh, and the ocean environment. All right. So you, you'd say the the moral of these books is, you know, for the next generation to be more environmentally aware of, of taking care of, you know, nature. Definitely, definitely. And also female empowerment, I think. Okay. Uh, that was that was really on my mind at that time. My daughter uh, was getting a little bit older and I wanted to make sure, you know, she's, a, she's an incredible personality and I wanted to make sure that, you know, I was establishing a world of equality where she could have everything that I had, you know, okay. and um, and so I made the uh, the main character of the books um, a little girl based on her, mm -hmm. and based on my grandmother, who was a very powerful uh, um, figure in my life, and uh, yeah. named it after my grandmother, and, and went from there. That's pretty interesting. Aside from the books, you know, I mean, this is just to show you're 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 a man of many talents and and uh, <laughs> like to dabble in different things. You know, you're also a musician and a composer. Yeah, I think your master's is also in guitar, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, right? well, you have done your homework. Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. I mean, everybody that sits everybody that sits in on, on my on my table. I mean, I have to know everything about before yeah, before we I, talk. <laughs> you know, I I never studied music. I always mm -hmm. just picked it up by ear. All right. Um, I started playing guitar when I was uh, bass guitar when I was about nine and uh, um, electric guitar and acoustic guitar when I was about 11. Mm -hmm. And I was just drawn to it. Whoa. I just What got you into it? Um, I mean, you're talking to somebody that loves rock, you know. So yeah. I, I okay. can listen Jimmy, to Jimmy Ace, Hendrix. Jimmy Hen Voodoo Child. Yes. I love that song. Yeah. I can listen to it over and over again. Jimi Hendrix got me into it. And, um, and the actual song that got me into Jimi Hendrix was all along the Watchtower. Yeah. And uh, it was a cassette that I had been given by, uh, by my uncle. Mm -hmm. I was nine years old. I remember what was on both sides, clearly. On one side, it had Jimi Hendrix. Um, and on the other side, it had the Rolling Stones and three songs by The Doors. Okay. And, um, and the Jimi Hendrix, uh, he gave me this cassette. I thought I was top of the world. Okay. The cassette was a chrome cassette. But on, on Walkmans yeah. back then, mm -hmm. you had a tab which okay. was for a regular cassette uh -huh. or a chrome cassette. Right? Correct. Because chrome is a harder strip and mm -hmm. uh, therefore the, the playhead had to adjust up just incrementally. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't have a Walkman which had a chrome setting. So that was my mission as of that moment in time because yeah. I had this chrome cassette and I was so proud of it, but I didn't have a Walkman that could play on it. Mm -hmm. And I listened to this song and I just and I thought it was incredible. So I spoke to my uncle about it. I said, who is this guy? Mm -hmm. What is he doing? How's he getting that sound? You know, yeah. I thought guitar was strumming, not this. This was alive. This yeah. was tapping into... I this is know. making two guitar a uh, guitar sound like two guitars at once. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know? it was it was even more than that. And uh, and and he he grabbed me by the shoulder and he said, "You know what? When you see this guy play, his fingers are rolling like mm -hmm. lizards." And that description just captivated me. Just captivated okay. me. Fingers rolling like lizards mm -hmm. on a on a on a guitar. And uh, and he said to me, "You know, if you, he's talking, call me Kiri Boy. He said, Kiri Boy, if you if you uh, can play anything that this guy can play, okay, that's it. You've you've done it. Oh, you've won his respect. So I, I, I set about doing that. Yeah, yeah that was my mission. Okay. In those days, we didn't have YouTube and we didn't have all of the technology that mm -hmm. the youth of today has to learn and discover and uh, and do things. So uh, I had obtained a Jimi Hendrix record from a library. Interesting. And uh, and I was slowing the record down with the. Uh, bottom of the palm of my hand so I could yeah. hear the separation of the notes uh -huh. then I'd learn them as on the bottom of the fretboard mm -hmm. and then when I'd let go and it would speed up it would be and I'd move it up until I could find that <laughs> that was the adversity we had back then as musicians to yeah, learn how to play um, and before we wrap up uh, this, this this interview is, is there a message you want to tell to our Arab news audience 
Message in terms of uh, what, like a, a Kieran w- wise words of wisdom? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. I mean, you're, you're an interesting, Gosh. you're an interesting Gosh. character. You know, before well, we wrap up, they need uh, to tap into your mindset. So let me let me um, let me say this. Firstly, anyone wants to connect up with me, find me on LinkedIn, reach out to me, and say hi. Right, okay. and uh, uh, I'm I'm more than happy to interact with as many people in in this world as I possibly can because you can learn something from anyone. Of course. Any walk of life, any age, a three-year-old can come over to you and teach you a valuable lesson. Uh, And so there's that. I think one of the things that I learned is definitely I live this uh, philosophy. I do not take myself seriously, Mm -hmm. uh, but I take everybody I encounter and everything I need to do very seriously. And if you get that balance right, it opens you up for self-reflection and um, and change. Mm -hmm. And you don't get stuck in your ways. And, uh, and I think that's a really valuable thing for people to consider. Some people have a lot of ego. Some people put a, a lot of uh, fencing up, yeah. uh, a lot of scaffolding up. And this is how I should be. Therefore, I will be like this at the cost of interacting with people who could really teach you something. Mm-hmm. You know? um, and so that's, that's that. And, and, and I think um, maybe, um, maybe finally, I, I think one of the things um, that is unique And I encounter a few unique individuals who have a similar kind of a crazy moment like Mm me. Um, I mean, you're looking at when everyone thinks I'm in that case. So it's like, yeah, and and, and And I embrace it. Yeah. Oh, I embrace embrace it. it. I love it. I, by the way, if if someone tells me I'm polite and I'm nice, I kind of like just, I'm like, yeah, as long as it descend, doesn't descend into fight club areas. Yeah, of course not. That's that's like, you know, like I think that's the cutoff area. But But, I I think rather than crazy, I think what it is, is this, I, I'm, I love chasing discomfort yeah i really do i think that makes two of us i think when you get into a mode where it's it's every day it Mm -hmm. becomes a bit blah blah it becomes a bit bland becomes a bit beige and you you want to sort of challenge yourself you want to see what you can do we've all got such a limited time to uh to, to to learn and to impart what we learn onto others and share what we learn with others so for me chase that discomfort do something you've never done before see if you can give it a crack and uh even if you don't uh make it you tried and whatever you learned from making it or not making it, you can apply in other spheres. And, and that's an important uh, opportunity that we have as well. All right. That's, I mean, that's some, that's some solid advice. And uh, I'd like to thank you for being with us uh, on, on this episode. And before we wrap up, uh, what you said just kind of reminds me of a quote, I believe, where it says, you know, life is a comedy, not a tragedy, but we take it seriously. Yeah. So, I mean, there's always room to expand, grow and learn something when you don't take yourself seriously. And I think you're a true testament uh, of that. I mean, if I, if I, I could say I am too, but like I'm tooting my own horn by, by, by saying that, but we'll leave you. You as, are too. <laughs> See, I just tooted your horn. <laughs> you are so too. Just, yeah, all right. It was a pleasure having you. Absolutely. And, Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to, you know, congratulate, you know, um, the Deraya Gate Development Authority on its fifth year anniversary. Hopefully we can do this interview again in 10 years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, in any case, we're going to have you broadcasting from up today, aren't we? Oh, so. of course. I'm, I, like I said, I'm taking you up on that offer. Great. Excellent. <laughs> and I, wel- I welcome everybody to come and visit and, uh, and drop me a line with your feedback on what you experience and uh, and yeah great can't wait thank you for having me yeah, thanks for you thank you for being there uh, being here sorry and uh, that's all the time we have uh, be sure to tune in to our next episode of the May Man Show and tune in to Arab News's special coverage for the fifth anniversary for the Daria Gate Development Authority see you later